A lot of the time in CSGO, the bad guy will get away with it. Scammers are rarely held accountable in the wild west of the skin economy. This video is not about those times though. This video is about the times they got utterly destroyed. And we're going to be having a look at what happened and having a good laugh at these horrible people <laughs> getting some well-deserved comeuppance. I found a bunch of really great stories of these guys getting wrecked and we are going to be going through them. Now, this video is sponsored by Skinport, the easy to use skins marketplace where you can sell your skins for real cash. Skinport has a huge range of skins, over 220,000 of them at prices miles cheaper than the Steam market, up to 35% off. You can purchase skins in an instant, just pick what you want and straight up buy it. There is no need to deposit and there are no hidden fees. There's also a high definition screenshot feature built into the site itself so you can see exactly what you're getting before you buy. The site is also super highly rated on Trustpilot with a 4.9 out of 5 star rating, it is completely safe and reliable to use, so I highly recommend checking it out. Link is in the description. So this is Weens, an infamous scammer in the South American scene who rose to prominence in 2017 when he scammed someone for a minimal wear dragon lore and then proceeded to boast about what he'd done on Facebook and then also literally call the weapon orb scam lore. Clearly, we are dealing with a particularly arrogant specimen here who thought he was completely above any consequences. And for a while, it probably seemed to him like he was. People rushed to report him on Steam Rep, but because all the evidence was in Spanish, none of the reports were accepted. Weeds proudly showcased a huge inventory of mostly scam skins on his profile. Clearly, he felt he was never getting banned. And by having such a huge inventory, it also became a lot easier for him to convince his victims he was legit. And he continued to flaunt his success on Facebook too actively gloating about the fact he was getting away with it, and it made him incredibly notorious in the local scene. Someone actually asked on the Argentine Facebook group whether he was a scammer, and he got a ton of replies featuring things like, he's the most famous scammer in Latin America. I can't believe people are still asking this. And Capo, they told you like three times as a scam and you keep asking, are you seriously that stupid? But we didn't care. They couldn't stop him. No one was going to. He was free to scam idiots until the end of time with impunity. Wait, hold on, what's this? Yes. As of a few days ago, Weeds was finally trade banned. Now, he claims it's only for two weeks, and while I would not believe a word that comes out of this man's mouth, that is possible, but he will have a trade probation even if he is lifted, and that will probably force him to move to a different account and seriously derail his operations. And by the way, if you have any concern about whether or not this guy's guilty, just look at the plus rep comments. Look, plus rep comment at 27th November, 9.43am, one at 9.42am the same day, another one at 9.42am, and if you're going back, look, there's one every couple of minutes on the same day. <laughs> couple of minutes apart, obvious fake plus rep, only scammers do this. Oh, by the way, apparently it's only good looking women with very low level Steam accounts that trade with him. Wow, what a player. So yeah, justice has been done, at least for now. 20k CSGO skins banned. And by the way, thanks to Shay for helping me with this one. I wouldn't know about it otherwise. And I'm just gonna say, they make an amazing point in this tweet. Not, not suggesting anyone does anything, but I think Shay makes an amazing point here. Now, the second scammer is a little bit different to the first because he wasn't destroyed by Valve. He was destroyed by Prodigy DDK. And while Prodigy may call himself a simp, when it comes to how he destroyed this scammer, he is a hulking alpha chad. So who is the scammer? Well, it's this guy, currently called Tossin, but previously known as Colosso. His Steam account is pretty bland, mostly because he didn't do his scamming on Steam, he did it on Discord. and. This was really important too because it meant there was no evidence that could be used to convict him on Steam Rep. And over the years he had a few decent hauls. Most notably he scammed a wild those in late 2020. Based on Steam Rep he liked to target people in desperate need of money to pay their bills. But eventually the trading scene figured out what he was doing and banned his ass. Apparently he had a Twitter he deleted and most big traders unfriended him. And that's actually where this story begins. You see, Colosso was not going to let this little setback stop him. He wanted the big bucks, so he made a new Discord account called BYOB and set to work weaseling his way into Discord communities. Now, he wasn't exactly good at it. One of his strategies apparently involved pretending to be an edgy memer to fit in, didn't work too well from what I heard. But what did work 
was a little scam he pulled off where he managed to grab himself a $25,000 AK. Now, naturally, Colossal was jubilant going around to people boasting about how good his AK was, but the problem was that he now had to find a way to cash out. And not just anyone will buy a $25,000 AK, you need a specialist buyer. And luckily, there was one at hand. Prodigy DDK. Now, Prodigy insisted that BYOB had to go first in the trade, which, you know, he's the big YouTuber, fair enough, normally you have to go first when trading with them. And after a bit of convincing, BYOB agreed and sent the skin and then sat back waiting for his crypto to arrive. And I mean, Prodigy is a safe bet, right? He's a YouTuber, he's not gonna risk his reputation. And I mean, have you seen this guy? He is a self-proclaimed simp. What a wuss. There is no way this dude has the boss. Oh shit, right. Okay, so turns out Prodigy was actually working for the good guys all along. As a bonus, I've got a Steam chat log of Colosso crying about it afterwards. I got scammed for it. What? For the AK, I got scammed. 25k gone, there goes all my money. What happened? Well, I went first against a YouTuber with nine reason hollows and 211k YouTube subs, Prodigy DDK. He scammed me. That was all my money, I don't have any more money for food to buy myself, lol. Why would you say lol after you think something you're gonna starve? Anyway, what Prodigy did here was controversial. Scamming scammers is definitely a gray area. I normally wouldn't do it. And Prodigy himself was pretty uncomfortable about it. But at the end of the day, I think justice was done. The bad guy here got what he deserved. Now, in the past you may have heard me call an individual called Andre CSGO's Biggest Scammer, but in reality, that's probably not true. CSGO's Biggest Scammer is actually this guy, someone called Panthernium. How bad was this guy? Really, really bad. On his main account alone, he was scamming tens of thousands of dollars of skins. Thanks to a user called Mostic, we have a really good record of this. During one month alone, he scammed two Dragon Laws, a How, a Medusa, three Sapphires, a Ruby and an Emerald, and that's only one of his three accounts. Oh, and he was also a certified internet tough guy who would talk complete sh to anyone who avoided his scams, happily throwing around racial slurs and even threatening the families of people who didn't go along with it. Now, he was banned on Steam Rep on all his accounts for a long time, but he got around this little issue by just making his own fake rep site. It's pretty empty now, but originally it claimed he'd done deals with people like Stack, who by the way hadn't traded for years at that point, and combined with what I can only imagine was an incredible scam ethic. By early 2020, he was basically the most notorious scammer on all of Steam. Or at least he wasn't until Steam banned him in March 2020. It appears to have been due to all the attention Zip was bringing to his activities and the stuff in his inventory when he got hit will make your eyes water. He's got two Lotuses, a Howl, a Medusa, Pandora's Box Gloves, an N9 Sapphire, a Factory of Crambert Law, multiple Caddos, two Fire Serpents, a Prince and a Talon Fade. He got wrecked with this one. But naturally, being the tough guy that he was, he took the L, accepted it, and just went and moved on. I'm kidding. He actually went and cried in Zippo's DMs on an alt. And the insight into the mindset here is f***ing fascinating. He's acting like he's the one who's been scammed. This is his business you've ruined. It's his life you've ruined. And it's particularly pathetic given a lot of his victims would have been relatively poor. Poor people that he scammed often out of life-changing money they might have desperately needed. But Valve wasn't done here either. Over the next three months, they hunted down each of his alts one by one and they banned him. They banned Moonthian with a Crambit Sapphire, a Butterfly Sapphire and a Butterfly Fade in his inventory. They banned another alt called Brainstorm with a Dragon Law, a Gungnir and a Medusa in its inventory. And finally, they banned an alt called Frederick with two Talon Sapphires, a Crambit Emerald and a Tier 1 AK Case Harden in his inventory. He got away with it for a long time, but ultimately, Valve destroyed him. And while I'm sure this miserable little cretin is still busy scamming people on some other old account in the dark corners of Steam to this very day, they made it hurt for him. And that is exactly what I like to see. Now, one of the reasons scammers love CSGO skins is that you can steal tens of thousands of dollars and the worst punishments you're gonna come across are a trade ban or people saying mean things about you on Twitter, no visit from the police, Stop. no criminal record and no lifelong consequences. Anyway, this is the Chinese scammer Gugu, pictured here prior to being arrested for scamming CSGO skins. Now, why is it that Gugu is the one dumb f in the entire scene to ever get arrested for scamming skins? 
Well, that's a really good question because a lot of this story is actually shrouded in mystery. Basically, all we know is who he scammed, what he scammed, and that he was apparently arrested, but not a whole lot else. Although, one thing is certain, he definitely did get wrecked. Basically, Gugu was a large Chinese selector back in the 2016 to 2017 era of CSGO. He was friends with all the big guys and ended up convincing one of them, QKSS, to lend him $100,000 of skins back in 2017. These little skins here, pretty bonkers, definitely worth a lot more than 100k now. And at this point, Gugu was like, well, this is a lot of money, I guess it's time to exit scam. Except QKS, for understandable reasons, wasn't terribly happy about this, so he picked up his phone and he called the cops. Now, what actually ended up happening is kind of murky. The sources for Gugu being arrested aren't even that great, although it seems like it did happen. Naturally, people have speculated that QKSS might have had Communist Party connections, that might have been why he was able to get Gugu arrested, which he may well have, although it's not certain. But what is certain here? is that QKSS got his skins back. This mother f tried to dip on him, but clearly it did not work because you can track the history of all the skins he borrowed and they all went back into QKSS's inventory. But Gugu wasn't done wrecking himself just yet because he still had a pretty nice inventory left on his dormant account. And in 2020, he came back to the game, saw they'd gone up in value a ton and then did the completely logical thing, which was to instant sell all these skins at bargain basement prices on CS Money. He took a massive L here, lost thousands and thousands of dollars, and it also meant he got significant attention on social media. And this turned out to be a bit of a problem when he attempted to cash out the skins he got off CS Money on CSGO Empire, because CSGO Empire noticed what he was doing and then locked his account while they investigated whether the funds he was trying to liquidate were scammed or not. I don't know how that story ended exactly, but what I do know is that Gugu definitely got a taste of his own medicine there, which is nice to see, even if the only reason it probably happened in the first place is because he tried to scam someone who was incredibly rich. So, a final scammer is Phantom Lord. I'm sorry, it had to be him. And look, I've got a mini documentary on this guy. We are not going through his story in detail here, but what I am gonna do is give a little update on the fun stuff that's happened since I made that video, because things have not gone well for him since I made it. So, quick recap. Phantom Lord is a guy who used to be the biggest streamer on Twitch. He made a gambling site. He didn't tell people he owned it, he streamed himself using it, he cheated so he'd win on the site while he was streaming it, he made millions of dollars at the expense of his fans in the process, it all got linked to a well-known journalist, and that well-known journalist used the information to end Phantom Lord's career. Now, there was no coming back from something like this, and for good measure, Twitch also banned him too, so there really was no coming back. It's over, it's done, your career is finished, time to do something else. But Phantom, being an ex-Best Buy employee with no actual life skills, had some trouble with this moving on business, so he decided to take a slightly different approach. Basically, he was going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars suing Twitch, and when he won, he was going to get a banger damages payout. My case is looking towards 35 million plus um, in damages, and that's, that's like minimum. It could go beyond that. Oh, and everyone would apparently totally forget about all the terrible things he'd done for some reason. Now, a protracted legal struggle followed, but after three years of stress, anxiety, and multiple court hearings, Phantom Lord did what many thought was impossible. He won. Now, based on his social media, you'd think it was basically the ending of Return of the Jedi or something. The good guys had won, the evil empire had been defeated. Numerous interviews followed where Phantom explained how he defeated the horrible people at Twitch who'd totally banned him for no good reason. And best of all, because the court ruled Twitch violated his contract, he'd set a precedent that would protect other streamers in the future. That's right, this was a win for the entire community. In reality though, what he'd actually won was $20,000 in damages out of the $35 million he'd sued for. 35 million plus um, in damages, and that's, that's like minimum. It could go beyond that. Oh, and he had to pay his own legal fees too, which were way more than $20,000. Also, that precedent the case supposedly set, well, you see, the contract Phantom Lord sued over hasn't been used on Twitch in 10 years at this point. No Twitch streamer today is really on it, so the precedent doesn't actually protect anyone anyway. But hey, at least it was a PR win. And with his three-year nightmare finally over, Phantom returned home 
feeling, a sense of peace descending on his inner self, like a massive weight had just been lifted to do what he wanted to do all along, produce some banger streams on YouTube for his loving fans. Except it turns out that winning a lawsuit over a technical breach of an obscure clause in a legal contract doesn't magically make everyone forget all the terrible things you've done. And he quickly discovered that everyone still hated him and his streams were still dead. And this is the best part too, his solution to this was another lawsuit. Now, this new lawsuit is one of the most transparent PR stunts I've ever seen. His list of demands in it literally reads like a Redditor's wish list of things Twitch could do better. It's obviously made for social media and not for the courts. He also tried to make it look on Twitter as if this was an actual ruling by the judge rather than something written by his lawyer. People were legitimately confused about this in the comments. Just obvious attention seeking behavior and fittingly, this lawsuit was ignored by almost everyone and then immediately thrown out by a judge who took it upon himself to remind Phantom Lord that he was a very, very naughty boy and shouldn't be feeling sorry for himself. It's not quite clear what Phantom has been doing since then, other than begging Dr. Disrespect for attention or talking about how painful and torturous everything is, although one thing is for sure, the memeing definitely hasn't stopped and I think this is the perfect point to end the video. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe. Massively appreciated. Otherwise, trust the numbers, not your guts. I'm Jesus. Thanks for watching. See ya.